Hello guys and welcome to another Immortal Tech video. Today we are going to be giving a brief overview of what DMA PCI Leech is, what some anti-cheats and malware do to prevent or detect it, and how, if for some reason you decide to purchase a modified version of PCI Leech on your own, how you can avoid being scammed. So why are we making this video now? Well, we are releasing our newest product, Immortal DMA Knight, a much more affordable but still high quality FPGA development board equipped with our most current custom version of PCI Leech to avoid detection by anti-cheats and malware. However, there still may be cases where you want a more personalized version of PCI Leech or other firmware that better suits your needs. This video is intended to give you a brief overview of PCI Leech detection prevention methods done by anti-cheats and malware and customized firmware sold in the current market. Here's our table of contents. So what is PCI Leech? Well, PCI Leech is a powerful tool designed for security research, leveraging direct memory access, or DMA, VI PCI Express, to directly read and manipulate the memory of a target computer system. By using specialized FPGA DMA hardware, PCI Leech tr bypasses traditional software-based security defenses. Its ability to interact with system memory at a low level without detection makes it invaluable for analyzing system memory. Um, it is operating at the hardware level in the Windows kernel architecture. So what are some common misconceptions we see with PCI leech detection and prevention vectors? Uh, the first one is transaction layer packets or TLPs. Uh, TLPs are the packets to use for communication over the PCIe interface and this facilitates different types of data transfers and this will also include uh, memory reads and writes which are a central part of PCI leech's functionality. A TLP is not a detection vector. The only way to intercept or analyze TLP is using a special hardware, and this would be something like a PCI Express protocol analyzer. Uh, these things are about $20,000, so you're not going to be seeing uh, an anti-cheat or a malware uh, intercept your TLP and then detect and ban you. Um, uh, we can give an example. So let's say you send a TLP and you want to read in a specific space. Uh, once that is processed, your uh, completion TLP will be sent back with the data in it. Uh, none of this can be intercepted or seen by any software on your PC. Um, so another thing we see is something called, f what this word gets thrown out loud, is called firmware emulation. Um, what we believe firmware emulation is, is this uh, config space and bar, uh, proper CFG and bar sh should be enough to get you through um, anything on the market currently that claims to detect or prevent uh, DMA devices. And so when you see something like drivers, which have absolutely nothing to do with detecting or preventing um, DMA devices, uh, that is a red flag and we're going to talk about that right now. So. A driver is installed onto your OS and um, your driver actually communicates with the PCIe device uh, not really the other way around. The only thing a PCIe device would say is send in, let's say, an interrupt to the CPU to tell it it needs attention. And so uh, and actually can monitor driver APIs, but uh, this is not a vector, right? So a damaged or disabled device will not properly receive calls from its OS driver. Some PCIe devices may also not be able to take calls from a driver at all, uh, etc. Let's talk about the main detection and prevention vector for your DMA device and that would be the PCI configuration space or CFG. So what is the CFG? Well, it's a special memory region that allows the CPU and operating system to discover and configure your PCI devices. Uh, this contains vital information about the device such as its vendor ID, device ID, class code, status registers, bars, etc. Uh, your uh, some people, you're going to see people claim to hide your d device from the, op this is just not the case. Okay, so that's a red flag right there. Anyways, so the config space detection prevention vectors, uh, we have obviously vector uh, device IDs, etc. You can also see stuff like uh, PCI Leech default config space blocks. Uh, example of this is 40 to 90. Um, this is something that every provider should be doing by now. You, you won't see anything and you need to modify the Zlinks IP core source to actually edit some of these regions which is why it's good to check on these. The next thing is uh, simple things, auto clear, register, master bar flag. Um, we're going to talk on the illegal uh, config space. So this means your CFG isn't 100% uh, capability. Uh, this means they haven't uh, fully customized your firmware to look exactly like another device. And you're going to see another thing is improper base address bar. So this is a little more specific. You're going to see uh, something called ACE or made by Tencent, ACE anti-cheat. Uh, they touch on bar a little bit right now. And um, illegal config space. 
So this, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that in the next one. So right here we have an example of a 100% config space compatibility and you're gonna have your generic provider right here. And this is what we call illogical, some people throw this word around, illogical config space and you're gonna see that it's missing a lot of capability. Um, they have not edited the PCI core to properly change that. And here we have a example from BDE services. Uh, right here is a good, you're gonna see, look at that, they have everything down. When comparing to a your config space, it should look exactly like a real device. There should be no difference. We have a uh, default PCLH 4090 block and a um, example of improper firmware. So you look at the 40 to 90 range and you can see, match it up. So we go 0, 1, 48, 0 set right here, exactly the same. You're going to be some slight differences, but overall, this is literally just the default PCIH. That means your firmware was not done correctly. And so we went ahead and put together in, uh, what we call an anti-cheat pyramid um, as of the date. Uh, so what this really is, is just the lengths they go to prevent and detect your DMA device. Um, the higher we go, the more false positives you'll actually see uh, with users being you know, prevented from having a device or... Uh, not allowed to play on that particular game because uh, let's say a CFG matches up with something or maybe the device is damaged, bar support, etc. You know, you can you can read the list and you'll, you'll see. Anyways, analyze your firmware, avoid being scammed. So let's go ahead and go over some common phrases before we show you how to analyze your firmware. So we're going to see things like one-to-one -one private individual firmware. Uh, this implies that this config space was made specifically for you. Uh, so when you purchase, uh, you know, one-to-one, -one, you're taking the word of the provider, obviously, and the best proof you can get is to make sure this config space is copied from a device you already own. So you can look at the config space between devices and make sure that it is indeed something from your PC and it is one-to-one. -one. And you can use our video. We're, we're going to show you real quick how to analyze your DMA CFG. Uh, pool, chair, you know, this is also all on the provider. Um, so there is a chance your pool firmware, if an anti-cheat gets a handle of it, uh, you can be banned if they use the config space as a vector. Uh, there's a problem with that though, and that is if your vector, your config space is a one-to-one -one of a real device. And you're going to see that um, you can ban illogical config spaces. It depends on what they're doing, but uh, for real devices, it's a lot riskier. We've seen, uh, I believe it was Battle Eye a long time ago do a pool ban and actually ban a large portion of their player base. 100% config space, what this means is that all the entire CFG is a one-to-one -one of your of a real device that you probably provided them using a telescan. Emulated firmware, um, this is a little more suspicious. So. Uh, what we think they're talking about is it implies full bar support, 100% config space. And we've seen people talk about receiving driver commands and sending interrupts, and this is a big red flag and usually means they're scamming you. Uh, so how to avoid being scammed? Well, just don't be afraid to ask what they're doing to the firmware, first of all. Um, emulate firmware for a high price. This is, this is usually a scam. Uh, never you know when you throw away words like technical words like emulated or TLP or weird shit like that they're scamming you. Secret private firmware um, uh, do we really need to get into this you know their secret developer private firmware you, they should be able to show you an example of what their firmware is first of all they should have an example and showcase it to you and tell you why you should be spending twenty five hundred dollars for uh, some firmware on your board uh, if they use technical jargon that is wrong or has little meaning, obvious red flag, uh, purchase only from a trusted and established pro. So this means the provider should be, you know, one, two years old. They shouldn't be brand new and they'll say, oh, uh, we have zero prevention or detection from anti-cheat or malware. And that's because they're brand new, right? You know, like, of course they don't. Um, avoid new, pro yeah, obviously, even if the reviews seem good. So this is a big thing. So you'll see a new provider will come out maybe for a month. We've seen this and then they will disappear as soon as something happens. Uh, be smart, use logical. So this is the biggest thing. You know, if you see, feel something suspicious or something, just, you know, don't, don't buy it. All right, guys, going to quickly show you how to analyze the CFG and bar of your device. So the first tool I'm going to show you is LSPCI. Go ahead, open up CMD as administrator and head over to the folder you have LSPCI in. We can provide all of these files in a link for you in the description. 
Uh, once you navigate to the folder, go ahead and run this command. And you're going to see uh, it goes and dumps all the CFG, all the devices, uh, first 100 blocks. And you can compare your 40 to 90 for uh, PCI Leech default block. Um, as you can see, these are not <laughs> DMA devices at all, so they won't have that. Alright, next one is Telescan. This one uh, gives you the entire. This one will give you the entire config space. Let's go open that up. And you're gonna go ahead and where it's probably gonna be is in this section. Let me use my mouse. Device port type tree. You can go ahead and find. Let's go ahead and look at a network card right here. As you can see, it has the full config space for you to look at and examine. The next thing, WD, uh, this will let you look at the bar support a little easier. Let's go ahead and open that. Alright guys, so real quick before we look at the bars, uh, PCI devices use base address registers bars to specify memory locations for the system to access the device's memory map resources. Um, pretty much, bars tell the system how much space is required and the type of space that is needed. And uh, I just want you to know that not all PCI devices may actively use bars. So for example, like a simple device uh, that doesn't require memory mapping or maybe their operation just might not use them at all. Uh, the easiest way uh, is just to look at a legitimate device that you know, you're trying to emulate and copy it exactly. New project. And you can go ahead and examine the device. You push your mouse over, it give you the vendor ID, right, product ID right at the start. So you can look, let's go find a right here never card cool you can see our bar config space let's go look at our bar real quick yeah it looks good if you want to try reading something read right into the bar let's go go read at offset four and get a value i believe I may be wrong but there is an open source uh, wi-fi they're trying to pretend to be and if you do offset four you'll actually return fff so that's how you realize that uh that is an emulation and it's not the bar is not properly done on that one all right guys thanks for watching uh, we appreciate your interest in immortal tech if there is another video you would like to see, maybe uh, analyzing using memprocfs or something, let us know please in the uh, text. And we hope you have a good day.